Germany had the most gifted generals of World War II. Their doctrine of mobile warfare welded bold operational plans to flexible tactics and allowed initiative at all levels. Politically, however, they served a fascist regime that embroiled the German army in dishonor and defeat. After the invasion of the Soviet Union and the American entry into the war in December 1941, German commanders were fighting against mounting odds under a dictator whose constant interventions in military decision-making grew ever more irrational. But most could not bring themselves to seek the overthrow of their Führer, however disillusioned they became. Heinz Guderian A career officer, Heinz Guderian, served in World War I, originally as a signals officer. After the war, he specialized in planning for armored warfare, and when the Nazis expanded German forces, was given command of a Panzer Armor Division. Published in 1937, his book Achtung Panzer stressed the need for motorized infantry to support the tank spread hat and for radio to facilitate command and control. He put these theories into practice in the invasion of Poland in September 1939 and, above all, in the invasion of France in May 1940. His Panzer Corps advanced through the Ardennes to cross the river Moss at Sedan punching a hole in the French defenses. Leading from the front, Guderian raced towards the Channel coast, refusing to stop, until ordered to buy Hitler himself. Guderian was prominent in Operation Barbadosa, but when forced to pull back from Moscow in the winter of 1941, he was dismissed, alleged to have ignored Hitler's standfast order. Sidelined until 1943, he returned as Inspector General of Armored Troops. After refusing to join the plot to assassinate Hitler in July 1944, he was appointed chief of the army general staff. Irascibly as ever, he argued bitterly with Hitler until sent on permanent leave in March 1945. Erich von Manstein Born into the Prussian military aristocracy, Erich von Manstein regarded Hitler and the Nazi party with disdain, yet was seduced by their revitalization of the German army and nation. Manstein was a staff officer in Germany in World War I and during most of the interwar era. In 1940, as chief of staff of Army Group A, he persuaded Hitler to adopt a plan for attacking France that, rather than the more traditional ideas of the high command, gave the major role to an armored thrust in the Ardennes. Manstein's plan was a startling success. In the campaigns in the Soviet Union from 1941, he demonstrated his skill as field commander climbing rapidly to command an army group. A hard-fought victory at Sevastopol was followed by frustration at Stalingrad, where his attempt to break the Soviet encirclement of the city failed. In early 1943, Manstein inflicted another defeat on the Soviets at Kharkov, but a failed attack at Kursk brought major German offensive action in the east to an end. Increasingly at odds with Hitler, Manstein was dismissed in March 1944, and held no other posts. He was later imprisoned for war crimes committed on the East Front. Erwin Rommel The son of a schoolmaster, Erwin Rommel, served as an infantry officer in World War I, earning the coveted Pour le Merit decoration for gallantry. He followed a dull path in infantry training and administration until his aggressive tactical ideas, detailed in his 1937 book Infantry Attacks, caught Hitler's attention. He was drawn into the Führer's circle, taking command of his personal security battalion. Rommel had no experience with tanks, but his connection with Hitler got him command of 7th Armored Division for the invasion of France. It was an inspired appointment for Rommel spread-headed the breakneck advance from the Ardine to the Channel, emerging as one of the heroes of the triumphant campaign. In February 1941, he was given command of the Africa Corps, a force sent to North Africa to prevent the Italians losing Libya. He was soon given command of all Axis forces in the desert. Though starved of resources, Rommel outfought his British opponents, coordinating tank maneuvers that constantly run foot at his sluggish enemies. At Gazela, in May-June 1942, he destroyed more than 500 British tanks. But Rommel's grasp of strategy did not equal his tactical gifts. Ignoring insuperable supply problems, he plunged forward into Egypt. Halted and then forced to retreat at El Alamein, 
he continued to display great skills in a lone fighting withdrawal. His inspired counterpunch against the Americans at the Kasserine Pass in February 1943, however, could not prevent eventual defeat in Tunisia. Rommel was recalled from North Africa before the final Axis surrender. He supervised the defense of the French coast against a light invasion, but was away on leave on D-Day. In July 1944, he was wounded in an air attack. Although not a participant in the Hitler assassination plot, Rommel fell under suspicion and committed suicide to avoid a trial and execution. A Walter Model Walter Model came from a non-military middle-class family and carved out a career in the aristocratic German officer corps through talent and hard work. He made slow progress until Hitler came to power, however. Curing favor with the Nazi regime, he reached the general's rank in 1939. Operation Barbarossa brought Model rapid promotion. He led a panzer division in the initial invasion of the USSR but seven months later was in command of 9th Army resisting a Soviet counteroffensive at Rzhev. Hitler came to trust him as no other of his generals. Known as the Führer's Fireman, Model specialized in defensive warfare. In 1944, he halted the advancing Soviet armies east of Prussia and was then switched to France. He failed to halt the Allied breakout from Normandy, but repulsed their airborne offensive at Arnhem during Operation Market Garden. Against his better judgment, he executed Hitler's order for the attack that became the Battle of the Bulge, which proved a disaster for the German army. In 1945, his forces now encircled in the Ruhr. Model committed suicide. 